Huawei showed off the Mate 30, yet, if you ask me, everyone's first question was, does Popple Google have their back? The answer is... Oh no! God! No! Hi and welcome to Need to Know, the show where we go beyond specs to see what's in it for you. I'm Alina and today we're going to talk about two groundbreaking phones and gaming subscriptions. Are they a loss in disguise? Just as the buzz settled around iPhone 11, three other phones popped up. At least three. Huawei showed off the Mate 30, yet, if you ask me, everyone's first question was, does Popple Google have their back? The answer is no. The Google Play Store went MIA. But you're probably up to date with that phone. What's really interesting to me is what happened after that. Other two Chinese phone makers got ahead, making Huawei seem even more of a black sheep. At least in some people's eyes. OnePlus 7T came out with top specs and Android 10 out of the box. Yes, this phone was able to bring all the Android goodness. More than that, it's the first phone to come out with Android 10. Fellow YouTubers loved it instantly. I can relate. Why? First, the 90Hz buttery smooth display, then up to 1000 nits brightness, the 855 plus chip giving it greater speed and the triple camera with super macro mode. Keep the macro mode in mind, we'll come back at it in just a bit. All this and more for about 600 bucks. A bargain, am I right? Not record-breaking though. Nope, that honor went to Xiaomi, the Apple of China. There's an interesting case. Xiaomi is maybe the only Chinese company with an ecosystem similar to Apple's. They're selling anything and everything. TVs, speakers, air purifiers, even rice cookers and robots. Yeah, if you want transformer that's, uh, you know, more than a plastic toy, Xiaomi is your guy. Smartphone controlled and old. Because of course they sell phones. Lots of phones. Groundbreaking phones even. Not kidding. They just came out with Mi Mix Alpha, a phone with 180 screen to body ratio. What does that even mean? A surround screen. Exactly like the sound, only for display. Everything on the phone is display, except for the top and bottom. Those are made out of aerospace grade titanium. Light? but sturdy. This insane display was paired with a huge camera, 108 megapixels. That was a never done before thing. And you basically get the largest sensor possible for a phone right now. The highest resolution and, of course, highest pixel count the holy triad of camera specs. So how about the selfie cam? Well, you're actually looking at it. It's the rear cam. Another thing that's interesting is the super macro mode. You can take a photo from up to 1.5 centimeters from the subject. If you have a deja vu, that's because OnePlus 7T also has macro mode and Nubia dual display and Vivo Nex 3. We're feeling a macro trend approaching. Yeah, Pun totally intended. If you think this is a wacky prototype, joke's on you. Move the money from your client's pocket into your pocket. Xiaomi is gonna sell it. This December, in fact, for almost $3,000. What? I know. In their defense, the display tech is remarkable and the camera is really something. Plus, there's an in-display fingerprint scanner and sound coming from the display instead of the speakers. Oh, and also 40 watts charging. Will I buy it? I'm not crazy! Ah! Who will? Hard to say. In the end, Mi Mix Alpha is the most fragile phone to exist. I fear for its life in Zach's hands. The scratching test is gonna be cringy. Xiaomi is not a noob though. They have a backup plan and it's called Mi 9 Pro, a 5G flagship phone with 12 gigs of RAM, plenty of storage, at just $600. Just like its glassy bro, it's a first. First phone to bring 30 watts wireless charging. You can charge it from 0 to 100% in 69 minutes. No joke, with 5G support and 10 watts reverse charging, it's a phone to watch out for. 
All these launches did make me think about this addictive loop we're in. It started with cameras. Let's make them bigger, better, not just for photos, also for videos. Now they can shoot 4K. Perfect. But the display is way too small to enjoy 4K content. So we make the display bigger. The notch comes in. But we don't want the notch. Screen to body ratios increase. But we want to take notes, send messages, live stream in the same time. Sorry, I was taking a selfie while shooting a Snapchat while periscoping that Snapchat. One display is not enough. Make two. Or a foldable phone? Maybe. Or maybe a surround screen. Is it getting out of control? Who's winning the more we get annoyed? Now, gaming subscriptions. Mobile ads and in-app purchases are driving all of us mad. What can mobile makers do to put us out of our misery? Zero ads, zero microtransactions, zero timers. Basically, fixing things the game developers broke in the past years. Hello, Apple Arcade and Google Play Pass. Seems ideal. Both services cost just $5 a month. Apple Arcade offers the first month free, Google the first 10 days free, plus the first year at just $2 per month if you subscribe until the 10th of October. The Apple Arcade subscription comes with semi-exclusive titles, you can't find them on Android stores, you can't even buy them on the App Store. Google Play doesn't have exclusivities. They do have, however, over 350 games and apps. You'll get things like Facetune and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic with $5 a month, no hidden fees, but you'll still find Google Play Pass content on iOS and to buy individually on Play Store. Apple Arcade games will play offline, but you might need internet to use Apple TV. You'll even get to attach Xbox One and PS4 controllers. Both services can be shared with up to five people or even a cat. But while Apple Arcade is available all over the world, Google Play Pass runs for now just in the US. Did you just open your phone to get your subscription? I don't blame you. Shut up and take my money! Just do me a favor and think about what you're paying for. In Apple Arcade, for games that you might like or not, no way to tell, they're all new. In Google Play Pass, old games and apps with something new, here and there, uh, that developers can always abandon. Yes, developers can opt out of Google Play Pass anytime. Oh, and they're paid royalties on the amount of time spent in the game. So, you might get addictive loops with infinite gameplay but no outstanding story. Plus, at the end of the day, it's another subscription. It pays off if you spend time daily using it. You don't? Then is it really a win or a loss in disguise? Until next time, you tell us. Are you gonna subscribe to Apple Arcade or Google Play Pass? Or maybe take the lead, we're free. And don't forget to hit the bell button if you want to see more videos like this. Oh, and how about some sweetness overload?